Dr. Martin Harris, thank you very much for joining us today. You. you are the CIO and Chief Strategy Officer of the Cleveland Clinic. You are the President of uh, HIMSS and uh, the Health uh, Technology Advisor to President Obama. Um, can you please tell us a bit more about your role within the Cleveland Clinic organization um, and how you foresee uh, this role evolving? What we really see at the Cleveland Clinic is that the strategy to transform healthcare and to be able to deliver greater value to patients over time is closely tied to our effective adoption of information technology, decreasing variability, and improving the actual outcomes uh, that we can deliver to patients. So in my role as both leading the strategic planning process and in driving the information technology division, I really get to see the marriage of those two. And the result of that truly is transformation. And what I mean by transformation is the ability to start to think about delivering care in ways that we've never thought about before, um, both in different locations, thinking about the patient's home, as well as in more timely and efficient fashions. Dr. Harris, the Cleveland Clinic model of care has been extremely successful and is world renowned. What would you say are the key components of its success? What's the secret sauce, if you will? The first thing is we truly are focused on the patient first. Um, the second is our model of care really is physician-led and that we have coordinated our services um, across a spectrum of related clinical specialties um, focused on the patient. Now, the third thing I would say is that the group culture is really the secret sauce. For 80 years, we have worked in a collaborative fashion, and that is the greatest challenge for healthcare uh, in the 21st century. It has become far more complex, and in order to deliver great outcomes for patients, physicians, nurses, allied health professionals, and administrative staff have to work as a team on behalf of the patient. Dr. Harris, um, technology and IT in particular uh, play a strategic role um, in any healthcare institution. Can you tell us more about how uh, IT is positioned in the Cleveland Clinic? Almost 10 years ago, as we were thinking about technology, we decided that we wouldn't focus on content uh, over the internet, that we felt there were other organizations that could do that well, but we would focus on service over the internet. So what has been strategic about our application of technology is thinking about how we can use it to affect the, del the care delivery model. So let me give you a couple of examples. While we did build out an electronic medical record, which serves our physician nurses, both in the physician's office as well as in the hospital, at the exact same time, we built tools for patients that allowed them to access information from home. Mm -hmm. We built tools for physicians that we did not employ. And we were thinking about approaches to interoperability, meaning acquiring data that we didn't generate, but that we could take into our systems and then use to make the best possible decisions for the patients that we care for. So in that sense, information technology is strategic because it truly facilitates a new transformed care delivery model. Hmm. Very interesting. Um, clearly on such a journey and uh, realizing the kind of benefits and capabilities that you've just highlighted, there must have been many impediments uh, on the road. Key among them likely would have been usage uh, with physicians who notoriously don't always use um, uh, the latest, greatest um, information technology tools and capabilities. What are some of the challenges that you faced and how did you overcome them? Right. So you're absolutely right. Adoption of the technology remains a, t a challenge in our country today. Um, as I think about the, how we overcame those, 
it really was still sticking to the same basic ideas. Our goal was to improve the process of care over time. And so what we thought about is what's the best sequence for implementing the technology so that it delivered the most value at each step. So mm -hmm. unlike many organizations, we did not implement the hospital information system first, but rather we began with the largest part of our organization, which is the ambulatory practice. Mm -hmm. Now what that did was to put a lot of information about patients into the EMR, so that when it became time to move to the inpatient side, our physicians were, one, already using it on the ambulatory side. Second, it brought value immediately because they could see information that had been collected prior to the patient's admission at this point in time. And third, they had a common user experience because we used an integrated approach. We didn't use different systems in the outpatient side versus the inpatient side. Mm -hmm. So if you follow the practical practice goals that you're after and apply the technology in a sequence that sequentially adds value uh, for the caregivers, uh, you can overcome many of the barriers uh, that you still hear about today. Mm. And is this value uh, typically uh, implicit and experienced or, or is it mapped and measured and recorded and reported on? Is it part of the culture to track benefit? Around our technology, absolutely. So we have an entire division uh, that's called medical operations, whose primary purpose is to really provide transparency around all of the care processes that we have, both from a quality point of view, as well as from an efficiency point of view. Dr. Harris. Um, I'd like to switch topics a bit now and talk about information exchanges. They've been very much of a hot topic in the healthcare industry as well as in other industries. Uh, what do you see the role uh, being and uh, how do you see them play at the local level as well as, the, as at the national level? Information exchange is the fi final mile in truly getting the value out of electronic health record technology. Mm -hmm. um, so locally, and when I say locally, I'm talking now about within an organization, uh, you must be able to get information to exchange between departmental systems like a laboratory system or a radiology system and from one site to another mm -hmm. in order to provide value to patients. Now. What happens every day at the Cleveland Clinic, however, is there are patients who are coming in who actually have been seen uh, by physicians who are not part of our organization. So that brings us to what I call the regional or state level requirement for information exchange. So we would like to be able to get that information into our electronic record uh, in order to provide the best care to patients. The state of Ohio, where we're located, is doing that right now, and we would expect to have that exchange in place by the middle of next year, so that no matter where the patient comes from in the state of Ohio, we will have the information we need to make good decisions on their behalf. Finally, um, the, the challenge in a mobile society like the United States is to make that happen on a national scale. Now, the speed to execution for that is going to be the question, and there are really multiple avenues that I see happening. Some will be private, and others will be public. Two of the private ones that we've worked on are with large companies who are already interfacing with large numbers of people every day. And when I say large numbers, although the Cleveland Clinic probably sees well over a million patients in any given calendar year. Yeah. Now we're talking about tens of millions or even hundreds of millions. So over the last uh, few years, we've done work with Microsoft uh, to allow a patient at their direction to pull information from their local market into an account that they control at one of those two companies and then make another independent decision 
to move that information to the Cleveland Clinic, thereby completing the loop and making the information that's available, making it available so that our physicians can provide the best care. Now, our goal is not to dictate which exchange the patient wants to use. We just want to be connected to any service that they find valuable. Um, no matter what the service is, they all have one fundamental requirement, and that is uh, that they maintain the security and confidentiality of the patient's information. Dr. Harris, today's industry is experiencing rapid change. Industry sectors are colliding, things are coming together uh, in ways that they never have before, largely driven by huge technological advances. We see telecom players playing in the media space, playing in the healthcare space, often even starting to work in the banking space. Uh, and a lot of these elements, th the lines are getting much more blurred. Uh, social networking technology, social media technology, um, new uh, cutting edge next generation infrastructure from cloud computing uh, to the use of Web 2.0 and Web 3.0 are changing the equation. What's the agenda for Cleveland Clinic in terms of new next generation technology? Information technology has now become the fastest growing innovation area at the Cleveland Clinic. Uh, and we have been leading in that area uh, we've done a number of projects, including the uh, information exchange projects. We have built um, analytics tools that allow us to begin thinking about not just one patient, but an entire group of patients with either a similar illness or receiving a, a similar um, surgical procedure so that we can better understand the inputs to that process and the outcomes of the process going forward. And only information technology has allowed us to do that. But I think um, the other greatest advance that we're seeing is really the engagement from the patient side. Uh, so we were one of the early adopters of what's called a personal health record. So we have over 300,000 patients now who when they need basic information, their lab test results, what medications they're on, their allergy list, what are their medical problems, and even decision support tools like when do I need my mammogram, when do I need other medical prevention uh, tests. Uh, we, have a, we use information technology to allow the patient uh, to get at that information in a self-service mode just like many other industries and that's becoming an expectation. On, in, in some cases, we are following the herd, if you will, in that I believe that patients have adopted social media. Uh, we are beginning to explore how that might play. Uh, right now, we're using it primarily for controlled medical content distribution, so to help inform individuals about particular medical procedures or medical conditions. I think what we have to consider is whether it's an appropriate medium for actually trying to exchange either medical information or uh, medical advice. Uh, I think it's a little early in the space to know the answer to that. Dr. Harris, the um, Cleveland Clinic model uh, of care has been extremely successful in the U.S. and internationally. What lessons would you say can be learned um, from those experiences? And what are the challenges uh, that, that you face when you look at uh, such models? I think the first thing, and I think you've said it well, is that um, when we have done international projects, our goal is to truly transfer the culture of the Cleveland Clinic uh, into that marketplace. And it has the same value set in terms of delivering the best possible care that we can to patients. Now, in order to make that happen, there are several challenges. The first is people, and that we have to be able to recruit individuals that understand that philosophy and that are going to 
be in the market where we're going to serve patients on a long-term basis. The second is that for us, the recruitment of physician and other clinician talent is absolutely critical. And we've learned that we need to take responsibility for doing that. Uh, and so we are the fourth largest graduate medical education program in the world. Uh, we have trained many physicians uh, that now practice in many different markets. And uh, we have called on uh, that resource in order to be able to get the right kind of talent uh, into those new locations. We think it's absolutely critical. And then the third then is transferring the processes of care. And so uh, we don't believe that technology can be readily substituted, that the practice of medicine, the reliable, reproducible, high-quality practice of medicine is tightly associated with the tools that you use and the procedures that you follow in using those tools. Dr. Harris, in closing, could you share your experience, your thoughts, perhaps even some advice to other CIOs uh, having not only run very large successful organizations, but also having built them? Healthcare is in a period of rapid change, uh, and for the next decade or so, I think health CIOs in particular must be prepared uh, for that change process. And it's a change that's moving away from thinking about technology uh, in the administrative space, registering a patient, getting them scheduled, producing a bill, to a period that we're in right now, which I call clinical integration, where you're deploying tools, clinical tools, doctors placing orders, seeing their results, writing their notes in a computer, to the most challenging phase, but I think also the most beneficial for a patient, which is operational integration. And in that phase, you really begin by setting the outcome that you'd like to accomplish, defining the process that you'd like to use to meet that outcome, and then tuning the technology to ensure that you hit it in a repeatable and reliable fashion. The challenge to CIOs is to move away from focusing on the technology as much to focusing on the marriage between the outcomes and how the technology allows us to accomplish those. Uh, so it's a broadening of the perspective uh, and moving away from being purely the technology expert to being an outcomes-oriented technology expert. Dr. Harris, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.